Hey friends, welcome to a tutorial. I'm going to be doing some porcelain testers today. So I normally do more um, kind of rustic pottery with like a lot of grog and a lot of texture, but I really wanted to give porcelain a try and we kind of wanted to make some um, candle holders. So porcelain is lovely for the translucentness of it so that, that you can see like the light through. And I thought with some of my carvings, it might look interesting. Um, so I'm gonna try them out to see how they fare on the wheel. So I have these ones, I get them from Bath Potters. If you're in the UK, um, it's one of my favorite pottery suppliers. So I have this one, Audrey Blackman porcelain, <laughs> standard porcelain royal porcelain, grogged porcelain. So I kind of picked them with price point in mind because porcelain can be really expensive and also um, firing temperature and also the whiteness. I want like a really white one. I hate when it's like a little bit off white or if they mix something else into the porcelain and makes it not as white. So I think the idea is that I'm going to just throw a couple of pieces, maybe one or two, or just maybe use, yeah, probably like two pieces with each, or maybe I just save half um, and just do one piece for now. And I'll do a different shape for each test, each clay, so I know the difference. Um, so yeah, I'll show you that. I'm gonna be throwing it on the reel, so I have a rotor wheel that I prop up on blocks. Excuse the mess on the floor, sorry about that. <laughs> it's gonna be cleaning day tomorrow, I promise. Um, but yeah, so I can actually throw standing up, which, hello, which um, is much better for my back. And I actually sometimes put my iPad there if I'm doing a long throwing session, which I am today. Um, and then I actually have all of my, these are all my pre-order. I, I kind of want to laminate them so I can clean them. But yeah, for now, I have all of my pre-order dinnerware up here. So I just know the grams, the what I throw to and what I trim to. So that's quite helpful. So that's kind of my setup. Hey guys, so um, I've just wetted the board and I'm gonna attach the first porcelain. Um, I haven't, I've been a bit more naughty and I haven't actually wedged it up just because um, I don't have time <laughs> and it's come straight out of the pug mill from the company so don't shout at me for that so i'm gonna see it's actually my first time throwing with porcelain so let's see so i'm just centering i just with my left hand i push forward and then i have my right hand just to steady the top and then i'm just going to start to cone it up god it feels like butter guys it's so feels so nice but also quite um like dense if that makes sense i think probably because the clay particles are all quite small and really packed together you actually feels like you need more force than stoneware and then i'm just gonna cone this up um especially because i haven't wedged it but it doesn't feel like it needs wedging and then start to push down so I'll probably show you one, maybe I'll speed through it depending on how long it's going, but I'll throw you, I'll show you one and then I'll probably just show you all the different shapes I make at the end, um, just so that you'll kind of get an idea for the feel and then I'll probably bisque and glaze them all as well and I'll take you through that process just so that you can see it from start to finish. Sometimes it's nice to see it from like a blob of clay into the finished piece. If they survive the kiln, <laughs> that's also another thing. So I've just combed it down, um, sorry, pushed it down. So because these are gonna be cups, I'm just gonna collar in a little bit or just kind of push the clay in just so that it's kind of more, um, it's kind of narrower. Yeah, and it is kind of in that board. So I, because I have these inserts, I need to make sure that um, there's no clay kind of peeping out the side so that it has, it's all attached to the board at the bottom. So yeah, now I'm gonna start to open it out. So I put two fingers in, push down. I am actually gonna measure how thick the base is with a needle because I know I wanna trim quite a tall foot ring on these. So let's see. So yeah, I just stop the wheel, push the needle in, mark the top with my finger. So that has about 1.5 centimeters, which is actually pretty good. And now I'm gonna compress that base. 
um, using those. Again, two fingers just going over the surface of that base. I'll give it a bit of a compression here and then do another bit of compression. I think porcelain has a bit of a tendency to crack, so I don't want that happening. So now I'm gonna pull out, you can actually increase the wheel speed for this, and then just, as long as you pull out really slow and steady, it should come out a bit more even, just a little bit. <clears throat> it just helps because if you do, for some reason, go a bit too fast, your wheel is spinning um, faster, so then it, it can like finish the rotation. Um, kind of before you pull out the next bit and it just makes it come out in a kind of a nice circular. Sometimes if you're finding you're pulling out and it's getting a bit wobbly or getting not like a perfect circle when you pull out, just increasing that wheel speed just a little bit helps. So I'm just compressing that base and let's have a go at pulling the walls up. Right. This is quite exciting for me. I haven't done a full before. It's always been on the list but I've never had like I always never have any time to do any experimentation, so I'm trying to be better at that this year. So squeeze from the bottom and start to pull up. This one I want to make a bit more angled, so I'm going to keep it a bit more straight. As I get to the rim, I kind of ease off that pressure, come off gently, add a bit more water, and I'm going to compress that rim down. So I don't know if I said, but this is about 500 grams of clay. Uh, the samples I got from Bath Potters are really good actually. They do all of their clay and samples so you can test them out before committing. And they do it in one kg. So I've just cut it in half. I'm gonna throw two cups. So again, I'm gonna come in at the bottom, squeeze and start to pull those walls up. This one actually feels nice to throw with. It looks like it's gonna be like a really nice white color. Come off gently, always come off any pottery gently just so that you don't add unintentionally add any wobbles to the top and then just compress that rim just helps with the strength and also just to compress that rim down as I go I kind of just feel the wall thickness just see if there's any points that are getting a bit too thin that's quite nice so I'll probably go again using my fingertips this time just while the walls get a bit thinner now I switch over to just using my fingertips squeezing those together and it just gives me a bit more control as I pull up the form again ease off the pressure around the rim just so that that rim doesn't get too oh I came up quite fast so that's what you're not meant to do <laughs> just compress that rim down I don't want that rim getting too thin so I know for this one I actually want to add a bit of shellac onto the surface so I'm going to leave the walls actually not too thin so they're actually feeling a bit on the thin side so I think I'm going to leave them there um, and kind of push in a little bit at that base and I know I want to bring out that bottom part a little bit I want to give it a bit of an angle at that bottom bring it up into the straight sides Kind of shaping it a little bit. I have a mirror here which is what I'm looking at. I might look a bit funny <laughs> just staring into the distance. So I'm just going to remove all that water. Actually I'll probably put it in that slops just so that I can save it. So it's not a huge cup um, but I know that I'm gonna um, uh, carve, uh, sorry, trim a lot at the bottom so I've left a lot of clay in that base. So it might not look that big but it's because I have quite a thick I'm going to have quite a high foot, so there's quite a lot of clay in that base. So I don't want to play with it too much, so I think if you play with porcelain too much, it's going to start to not play ball. So I'm going to square off the sides with this tool, which is actually also from Hartley & Noble. They make tools, which is nice. And they actually make custom tools, so this one is actually custom to the dimensions I wanted. So if you are looking for a specific tool, they can actually do some bespoke stuff for you, which is great. Sorry, this sounds like an advert for them or something. I just like using them. That, oh, I think that looks quite nice. And then I'm just gonna also do that bottom part as well. Just to give it a bit of shape at this point. Obviously you can do this at the trimming stage, but I think it's kind of nice just to, um, 
do it here as well so you have a bit of an easier time when you come to trim. I feel like I'm a putter that likes throwing more than trimming so that's why I do that. And then I'm taking um, this kind of tool, um, it has a bit of a triangle point and I use that just to trim off any excess at that bottom. So last thing I'll just kind of go over that rim. So my form is coming in a little bit which I actually quite like. Um, but I want to make sure that rim's nice to drink from, so I'm going to just flare that out ever so slightly just to give that a nicer profile to drink from. Um, and I, I had the envision that we could use these for cups, but also they might look cute with like little tea lights in them or little candles. So that's why I'm also trying to kind of make them not too tall, like more fat, but I think that would be a nice tea light holder as well. So yes, I think I'll leave that there. I might cut it off actually. I usually leave my pottery just to dry and it kind of pops off the back because I want to trim these quite quickly. I'm going to just cut it off just so that it dislodges itself from that bat um, easier. So yeah, that's it. So I'm going to take that out. Maybe I'll pick you up and can kind of show you. I should give myself a board to put it up. So yeah, the bats just pop out like that. Oh, I'm really happy with that shape actually. So I need to I'm just gonna come and show you that closer. So it has like a little bit of a taper to the rim um, and also a taper to the foot. I really like how that's looking actually. It's quite a new shape for me. Um, so yes, I'm excited to try some more. So I think what I'll do next is actually throw like a bit of a more of organic form. That's kind of like a nice straight porcelain surface, but I want to see how it goes with some more kind of wobbly pots. Sorry, wobbly pots. Um, and then I might press in some texture or some carving. We'll see how the porcelain wants to behave. Um, but yeah, I'm quite excited to do the other ones. Um, I must make sure that I note down all the different shapes with the different porcelain because I'm not actually going to label them underneath. I kind of want to put them in my next shop update if they do look nice. So um, I don't want to have like any like weird labels underneath. So here are the finished cups. So I have tested all those clays um, and just on a range of shapes so I plan to do some carving add some texture and maybe do a bit of a shellac test so I'll say more of that later on once they're a little bit drier but um, this one I quite like I kind of used the slip from throwing and brushed it on and um, these are just some of the organic ones this one I think I'm going to carve um, uh, maybe even like do some Kind of celestial carvings i thought would look nice on that and i'll leave some just as cups so yeah i quite like how they turned out so yeah i would say um if you're interested um sorry these are my terrible notes the um audrey blackman porcelain was really nice to throw with and so was the grog porcelain if you want to try them out as well but i think i'll kind of give you my review once i finish these up do the Kuroniki carvings for this one. Oop! Lovely rip. Oh, that's looking tasty. Okay, I'm gonna keep going. And I'm gonna go for one up here. Like that. Oh, nice. Just be, I'm not gonna touch the rim because I have a feeling that will crack. I have a feeling that's all gonna crack anyway, <laughs> but <laughs> this is why we test. I quite like how angled that is. It's like a little diamond. So that's how that one's looking. I'm not so happy with the facets, but considering it's my first time and I'd never faceted porcelain before, I'm thinking it's looking good. It's kind of good enough for testing out how it's gonna fire and glaze and everything. So yeah, I'm happy with that. Just to make those ridges a bit more, I think it helps that it's a bit um, firmer as well, so it's drier. So I'm just going to shave these guys off just to make those ridges I've thrown with more pronounced. So I've just finished carving this. So I, this is like more of an organic one I threw on the wheel and then I just enhanced those 
using this tool to um, kind of scrape out, carve away some of that clay. And I quite like how it looks actually. And I'm hoping that these thinner bits here will become translucent possibly. I was too scared to go like too thin and break it. So um, it's all learning to see how much I can push the clay and how thin it has to be. So now I'm just gonna take a sponge and smooth over those lines I've carved in. So it's a more, look at that, I love it. I, I quite like this one actually. The other ones I'm not so keen on, but yeah, I quite like how ripply this guy is. It kind of reminds me how I used to do my Kuranuki in this kind of ripple style. Um, so yeah, I'm just taking that sponge and just smoothing over all of that. So yeah, for the I've, I've also trimmed the bottom as well because I was worried about making the rim too thin, but yeah, it's okay actually. So yeah, I'll finish this and then I'll go on to my next one. So I've just painted that shellac over the rim and let it drip down actually. And I quite like how organic it looks. Um, and I also wanted to do it on the rim so that when I brush it away, sponge it away, it's not gonna disturb the rim like it did on my other one. So let's have a go. I've already done a bit of a test. So actually where the drips are thicker, it holds itself, but that little drip is starting to wash away. So you definitely need to have a thick layer of the shellac. So yeah, I'm liking how that's looking actually. So it's coming up. So I'm just gonna spend some time removing that shellac from the clay. This is the clay with grog in it actually. So I think that might make a difference because I'm gonna be washing away the clay and the grog will come to the surface. So I might also try this on my other one that's not grogged. Actually it's quite nice, the royal clay is quite nice to trim actually compared to one of them was terrible. Yeah, the standard porcelain. I'm not gonna get that one. <laughs> that was horrible to trim. So I'm just going to um, trim down. And this piece is actually quite thick because I thought I was gonna do Kuranuki on it. So I think I'm actually just gonna take away some of that weight and I'll do it the same for the inside as well. Yeah, I feel like with porcelain it is nice to get them really nice and thin. Oh, this is actually quite a nice one to trim. It's good to know. This one just came off the board, so it might be just when it pops off the board that's good for me to trim this clay. Actually, it's really nice to trim compared to the other ones. The grogged clay was obviously really easy to trim, but this one is, I kind of didn't want the grogged clay on. I might just test both of them out, but I kind of wanted a straight up porcelain. Just a little update on the porcelain, um, how they're drying. No cracks in the bottom yet. So this is my favorite one. It's looking so beautiful. I love the drips. Um, and yeah, so then, I quite like this one actually now it's dried. I didn't really like it when I was carving it, but I am I feel like this could actually be really nice. Oh, sorry, the light. Um, and it hasn't cracked yet. <laughs> so yeah, hopefully these will go into the bisque soon. And yeah, I'll show you them when I'm glazing. So these are the porcelain testers all bisqued up. So that one with the textured carvings and also the carvings I did with the diamond core tool. This one has that shellac on it. And this is the one that I carved those ridges in. This is actually so comfortable to hold. I really like this one. Um, this one is also with the shellac. And then this one with the slip brushed on. I love this one. And this one is gonna be more of a lantern. And then this one, again, is with the shellac. 
So I'm going to glaze them. Um, I think I'm going to glaze one of each of the testers just clear and then I'm just going to pick some coloured glazes to see how they look on the white porcelain because I think they'll come out much brighter. So I'll show you once they're all glazed up. So all of the porcelain testers are out of the kiln. I'm very excited to show you. So I just wanted to go through them. Um, so the first two are the Audrey Blackman. This is just in case you're interested, um, the kind of final results. Um, Audrey Blackman porcelain. So this is the one I did the Kuranuki style carvings with the texture and I absolutely love it. I didn't think I would, but I think putting, so this is clear glaze over the top. Um, so I'm just trying to find a good light. There we go. Um, just softens the carvings and it looks gorgeous. I'm really happy. So yeah, I'm interested to see actually how that looks with a candle inside. I want to see if it kind of shows up the carvings, which will look super pretty. Um, so that's that one. And then this is also the same clay, but this is left um, unglazed on the outside and again glazed inside. So yeah, that's looking lovely as well. Um, I probably won't show you the what they look like with candles in, like in terms of their translucency, but if they work out, I'll just insert some photos here. So this one I've left unglazed. This one was a bit dodgy one, so <laughs> excuse how messy it looks, but um, this one was the P2 standard porcelain. And this is the shellac effect. Let me see if I can show you a bit better. Yeah, so that's the shellac on the outside glazed on the inside i found this one actually a bit dodgy to work with like it just wasn't nice i don't know i didn't feel like it was like a nice texture and stuff so i don't think i'll be continuing with this one but i love i love 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 this this one with the rippled carvings super nice so yeah it's so nice to hold this one as well and then this one is the royal porcelain um I love this one. So this is the shellac effect by drip letting it drip down. Um, and then I, um, uh, sorry, put clear glaze inside and outside. And I love actually the clear glaze on the outside because it just kind of fills everything in and it just makes it look very like tactile. So yeah, that one is beautiful. And then for this one, because I knew that it wouldn't be translucent, I actually put a Arebe style glaze on it. And I love how it looks. So this is the one I painted the porcelain slip after I threw it. And it is gorgeous. And actually, I did have a little crack in the bottom. And the glaze has just covered it. <laughs> Which I thought would never happen. Um, so yeah, I think that we're just going to keep this one for us. Because it is a little bit on the heavy side. So I'll definitely try to throw much thinner next time. But... Yeah, that one is gorgeous as well. And lastly, the grogged porcelain, which is obviously much easier to trim slash throw with. Um, but yeah, I'm not just, I'm just not into the grog. It's just not that nice, smooth, buttery porcelain we all know and love, but it was good to try out. And then this is the other one that I did. So this is all the carvings. So yeah. So I'm very pleased with my first foray into porcelain. I mean, I wasn't expecting much really. Um, I always throw with stoneware. I've never thrown with porcelain before and not one cracked. So I'm very happy about that. But yeah, this test was more just to see how the clay is in terms of consistency and the color and everything, but they're all like pretty nice crisp white. Um, so I think I, I probably will continue with either the Audrey Blackman porcelain or the Royal porcelain, depending on what's in stock and the price. I think I liked both of those quite a lot. Um, yeah, I think this is probably my favourite pot from the from the batch. I hope you found this um, interesting if you're like trying out porcelain for the first time in the UK and just wanted to have a better idea on the porcelains available. Um, yeah, so I think I'm definitely going to continue. It's definitely like a very big departure from my usual what I normally do in terms of I have very highly textured work. I'm really into the surface texture and stuff, but I really want to try to use porcelain in more of a textural way. 
um, than um, classic very simple pots so I think I'm going to be doing a lot of slip application a lot of carving and just seeing where that takes me and really like trying to focus on using the porcelain to play with the light um, so yeah I will keep you updated and maybe do a couple more tutorials once I'm actually somewhat experienced rather than a first time kind of go so yeah anyway I hope you guys are enjoying your weekends your weeks your work whatever you're up to and I'll see you soon okay happy pottering bye